Hi Sagittarius, welcome to May. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I get started on your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So this month we have a full moon in Scorpio, which is happening in your 12th house, and that's on May 7th. And then on May 22nd we have a new moon in Gemini, which is happening in your 7th house of partnership. Um, so that should be exciting. We'll see what, what that brings. And then in the middle of the month, we have Saturn going retrograde, Venus going retrograde, and then your ruling planet Jupiter going retrograde. And I will get to that later when we do the astrology. But for now, let's see what the cards say. What does Sagittarius need to know about love and relationships for the month of May 2020? What does Sagittarius need to know about love and relationships for May 2020? What does Sag need to know about love and relationships? What is coming up for Sag? May 2020. The Seven of Wands. The Six of Pentacles. The temper Temperance. The Four of Swords, the Six of Cups, the Ace of Cups, the Two of Swords, the Chariot, the Hermit, the Page of Cups. This page has been showing up in a lot of my readings, <laughs> so you're all getting messages. Um, this is going to be a Chatty Catty month, Chatty Cathy month, I should say. Okay, so... So the Seven of Wands crossed by the Six of Pentacles. In May, you're going to be standing up for what you believe in and holding your ground. You're going to be um, overcoming obstacles in May. And sometimes the Seven of Wands is also about setting boundaries because I feel that in a, some, in a relationship, you have the Six of Pentacles here, crossing. When the Six of Pentacles comes up, you might be doing all the work and not getting enough back in return in a relationship. So you may have to set some boundaries and say, hey, look, you know, I'm doing this X, Y, and Z. What are you doing? You know, I feel like I'm doing everything. So you might have to have that conversation and set some boundaries. And the Seven of Wands is a positive card because it means you can overcome any challenges that you um, face. But you may have been giving too much. And the Six of Pentacles is also a card of learning how to give to yourself, learning when to say no. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say, no, I can't do that. It's too much. I need to take time out for me. Because I feel like people have been, you know, coming to you and you're just like, you're running, you're all over the place, trying to make everybody happy, trying to give to everyone. And, you know, you need a time out too. You need some time to recharge. The Temperance card. You have this. This is a card of, another card of balance, Six of Pentacles and the Temperance card. So you could be dealing with someone that is um, very different than you. You're, you're, very, you're compatible, but you're at the same time very, very different. And you have to kind of learn how to compromise. And if, you meet, if you're able to meet someone halfway and work out a win-win situation instead of a win-lose, things will be better. Um, you have to try and see things from the other person's side. Don't just think that everything has to go your way in May. So if, if you're having any kind of partnership difficulties in either love or even um, business or any kind of um, anything that has to do with working with other people, the key at, the key is to learn how to um, blend the energies together, work together. You know, so you bring your skills to the table, that person brings their skills to the table, and you meet halfway, and everyone ha and everyone is happy. Even in a relationship, sometimes the temperance comes up when there's like work-life imbalance. You need to find balance. Like, are you doing? All, are you working all the time, and you have no time for love? Um, so, if that's the case, you want to do that. You want to take some time out. You know, because you need a life too. It can't all be about work. The Four of Swords is in the recent past, so you could be recovering from something or needing time to rest and uh, maybe, 
you could be recovering from an illness or you could have been working really hard and now you you've been kind of um, a recluse that's going to start to change this is passing so you're going to be coming out of that period of isolation I think that as towards the end of May the beginning of June things are going to start to pick up in the world maybe we won't be under lockdown as much so coming up in the future you have the six of cups that is a card of moving into an, a, a position of greater harmony you have this new beginning coming the ace of cups and that's a time card for June July August so over the summer starting in June I say I would say more like the end of June July ish kind of in July there could be a new opportunity for love coming you might be even reconnecting with someone from the past because sometimes the six of cups can bring people from the past um, where you you have like it's like you're healing from the past because this is a card of healing this four of swords and the six of cups is like okay I've learned my lessons from the past I'm healing from the past now I want to I'm not going to repeat the same mistakes I want to make the future better I'm going to you know I'm moving into a period of greater harmony and it could be that if a relationship comes back at this time and you decide to do a, have a second chance you can make it work oh but if you heed this advice of trying to find the win-win and trying to compromise and don't be too rigid that things have to go a specific way um, this six of cups can also mean that you're connecting with someone that you've known in a past life it doesn't always so you might say well I'm not taking that old you know whatever back you know <laughs> this person was mean and cruel it doesn't have to even be in this life it could be someone that you've known in a past life that when you meet them you just feel a sense of familiarity and you're like wow you know I feel like I've known you for years but this that love is on maybe not so much in May uh, I think it's more gonna be happening in June June July but um, May you're gonna be fighting you know you're gonna be setting boundaries you're gonna stop letting people take advantage of you and your good nature and then you're gonna open yourself up you're gonna get the rest you need and you're gonna open yourself up to love it's coming you just have to make time in your life for it because I feel like look you've even got the hermit here with the four of swords you've been doing a lot of thinking and soul searching and you have the two of swords here this is another card the card of indecision you're like on the fence I don't know what I want do I want a new relationship do I want to fight and save the one I have do I want to stay where I'm at do I want to go somewhere else <coughs> you've got a lot of decisions to make and part of the problem if you're having um, problems in a relationship it could be because you're not willing to drop your guard and be vulnerable and you're not willing to reach out you're waiting for the other person you could have a little bit of pride like well you know I call them last and they need to call me or you know some crazy thing like that if you want to talk to someone reach out but you know what you may hear from someone in May because I'm seeing this page of cups that's a message a message of love so someone may reach out to you if you don't reach out to them first this is a card of both people wanting to you know you're waiting for the other person well you know and they're waiting for you they're waiting for a sign from you you're waiting for a sign from them and nothing's happening um, so you have to make a decision you have to get off the middle you know you have to get off the fence and make a decision you have the chariot here in your environment the chariot card is about you know you've been spreading yourself too thin you've you've got a million irons in the fire um, that's that Jupiter influence Jupiter makes you think that you could do it all that you could take on everything and it, you can't you know you can only do so much so you have to choose if you want to be successful you have to choose where to focus your energy you can't do everything otherwise you're not going to do everything well so zero in on what you really want to do and focus on that and you this is a card of success through discipline and focus not being scattered not being all over the place you know like someone's pulling you here someone's wor you're working on this you're doing that you know you know friends are calling you here other people go calling you there and you have to decide what do I really want <clears throat> and you've been doing a lot of that because you have the hermit here the hermit is about taking time out to think to go on a retreat 
to recharge. Uh, I think you, you might be doing that in May, and you have been doing that. You have been kind of isolating yourself um, and not socializing. And part of it is like the COVID thing, but, um, but even if we didn't have that, I think you'd still be in the hermit mode. You'd still be thinking like, you know, taking long walks in the woods, thinking about what am, what's right for me? Am I, am I in the right place? Am I going on the right path? What do I need? What do I want? So the hermit is good because it, you need that time out so that you can think. If you you know when you're too busy and you're you know just doing one thing like you're you're being a human doing instead of a human being, you can't think. You don't know what you want. You haven't like quieted your mind enough to meditate and listen to that inner voice. So take that time out to think about what you want in a relationship and even in your life, you know, and what path is going to get you there. Because there's going to be an opportunity coming. And you're going to have here, get a message. This Page of Cups is a message. Something is offered to you. Here, the, the Six of Cups, this, this person on the card is giving flowers to the girl. So you're going to be like receiving a gift or a message or some kind of hope that's going to lead to a new beginning. And it will get you off the fence. And it could lead to a nice new beginning, a new relationship or a new phase in an old relationship. You know, maybe you decide if you're in a half, like, let's say you're in a, part, a partnership, a committed partnership. You may decide to have a new start. Okay, let's start, let's start over. Let's have a new cycle in our life. You know, let's fix whatever was wrong. Let's learn from our mistakes and let's try again. Let's reach some type of compromise. That could happen for people who are committed. And for those who are not in a relationship, there could be someone new on the horizon. So let's see what the astrology has to say. Um, okay, we've got the full moon in Scorpio on May 7th. <clears throat> and that's happening in your 12th house. It's affecting 12 and 6. So the sun is in the 6th house, which is the house of employment, your day-to-day -day things on the job, and also um, health. And the 12th house is psychological. It's, it's kind of like um, what's happening behind the scenes, what's happening in your subconscious. Sometimes it could be self-undoing or hidden enemies, they say. But really, it's, it's you know, what, what's your psychological programming? You may, it, the 12th house is like the end of a cycle. So it fits in with this hermit energy, you know, where you need to just take time out to think and to figure out where you want, to, what cycles are ending, what do you need to leave behind, because you're going to be starting a new cycle. The next new moon is going to be in your first house. So or the next full moon, I should say. Um, so something is ending in the 12th house, and something is coming to light, um, because the, the full moon always brings things to the surface. It always shines a light on something. So in your case, it's shining a light on your 12th house and your 6th house of work, health, psychological programming, um, whatever is, you know, things that you need to leave behind. So if you've been isolated, maybe it's showing you like, hey, you know, you, you need to come out of that. Maybe you've been going through a depression or you've been working so hard and it's affecting your health. You don't have the energy. Um, with the sun and Mercury in the sixth house, you're going to hear a message. There's a message coming. There's communication. Mercury's communication. Um, <clears throat> and Mars is in your third house and it's squaring this new moon. It's T-squaring this, this full moon, I mean. Um, from your third house, that's the house of communication also. And it's the house of siblings, relatives. So if you're having some kind of challenges with relatives or your neighbors or people around you, um, that's all going to come to, it could come to a head around this full moon where you finally speak up and you get, you say, I've had enough. Now, you know, I've got to set some rules and regulations here. You guys are taking advantage of me. So that conversation could come up. Um, you have Neptune in the fourth house. That is, it's, it's, well, Neptune's been in your fourth house because Neptune stays in a sign like 12, 14 years, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but it's favoring this, this full moon. So something could be completing. Maybe you have a project that you've been working on at home, some type of creative project, um, and that's coming to, you know, completion. And then you have Pluto and Jupiter going through your second house in Capricorn. 
and that's also favoring this full moon. So there could be some financial situation that comes to completion. Um, so talks around money or contracts around, you know, what you're earning, your value, what you value. Um, that's all happening because Pl when Pluto and Jupiter come together and it's in your second house, that brings money. That's wealth. That's a wealth aspect. And, you know, in the past we had Saturn there too. So Saturn was kind of slowing things down or creating blocks. Now Saturn has moved on to Aquarius. So there's nothing stopping your Pluto and Jupiter uh, money success in the second house. Now you do have Venus in Gemini and Venus is in your seventh house. Um, so that could attract love. That could bring love. But Venus is squaring Neptune in the fourth house. So um, you want to make sure that you're seeing things realistically, that you're not idealizing someone, you know, seeing what you want to see because you need it so much. Or it could be that someone in your home um, is not being totally honest with you. So there's always deception around Neptune. So if you're not... Unless you're doing something creative, you're doing artwork, art, music, creative writing, then it's great. Then, you're, you know, the muse is with you. Uh, especially since Mercury is going to be sextiling Neptune. So if you ever wanted to write anything or do anything creative, you know, write a book, uh, communicate, write poetry, um, anything creative that involves the spoken word, now's the time to do it. You've got the support of Mercury. Um, and you've got the inspiration of Neptune. The only thing you need to be careful about is in love. That you're not ideal. You, know, you might be so gaga over this new beginning that you're not seeing the person realistically. Or you're, you know. So just do it. Open your eyes. Don't let love be blind. So then we have Saturn goes retrograde on May 11th until September 28th. And Saturn is in your third house. So that could slow down some kind of contract agreement if you're trying to, you know, sign a contract or if you're, you may feel like um, communication is harsh around with your relatives. Like people, they're not just get, they're just not getting you or they think you're being too harsh in your communication style. So um, you could have some conflicts with siblings, with Saturn, and you may have to rethink your strategy. So especially if you're dealing with something, a project that involves writing or communicating or internet or marketing, you may have to rethink your strategy uh, because of some um, resistance. You're meeting, like Saturn represents boundaries and resistance and a brick wall. So either you have to set the boundary or you have to deal with a boundary that someone else has set. Um, and then Venus goes retrograde on the 13th of May. So, and that's going through your, um, where is that? That's in your seventh house. So that could bring someone back from the past. That could help you. Either you're rethinking your relationships and your partnerships. You're rethinking your finances. But especially relationships because it's the seventh house that's getting activated. Um, you might be considering reconnecting with people from the past. Or someone from the past might want to connect with you. And you're going to be evaluating, do I want to reconnect? reconnect or what do we want to do and then you have Jupiter your ruling planet which is really important for Sag you know whatever Jupiter does because it rules your chart and it rules your Sun um, Jupiter's going retrograde May 14th to September 12th and Jupiter is now in your second house so Jupiter, usually when Jupiter comes into the second house, it brings abundance and money. Maybe you've been spending too much. You may want to think about how much money are you spending. Are you spending too much money? Do you have to pull back? Because when Jupiter goes retrograde, you want to pull back your, you know, because Jupiter's very like, yeah, let's just do everything. I can do it. I can afford that. Let me pay for that. You know, <laughs> uh, Drinks are on me. You know, Jupiter's like the planet of abundance. So you might have been maybe overly, uh, you're expecting all this money and maybe it hasn't been coming in or there might be a delay before some of this abundance starts to manifest. So just don't overspend, don't overcommit. Just, you know, rethink your strategy around money. Um, and what you value may change also, especially because Venus, when it goes retrograde, Venus rules love and money. So when it goes retrograde, you're going to be rethinking 
and it's not really a good time to start anything new. Like don't get married during your Venus retrograde because your taste will be changing. You know, what you do, what you, what you like and what you think you like when your Venus is retrograde may change when it goes direct. You might think, what was I thinking? You know, if you, so don't commit to anything permanent during a retrograde period. You can explore, you could experiment, um, but wait till the period is over before you actually sign on the dotted line. Because your, your needs might change and you might decide like, why did I buy that dress? Or why did I get that haircut? Or why did I decorate? Why did I paint my whole house bright green? You know, like all of a sudden you're like, I don't even like that color. But so, but when, when Venus is retrograde, we just decide like, oh, I want to try something different. I, I, I really like that. Whatever, you know, and then you might change your mind. So, so then we have the new moon. <clears throat> in your seventh house at the end of may may 22nd now if there's ever going to be a love a time for a new beginning in love this is it new moon in your seventh house uh and that only seventh house is not only um committed partnerships it's also business partnerships so you could be forming some type of business partnership around that time and saturn's in your third house so <clears throat> whatever you're agreeing to is going to be in place for a long time so make sure you want it because Whatever Saturn, when Saturn um, is involved, it is going to be cut into stone. You know, it's going to last for a long time. Um, so Saturn is in Aquarius in your third house, and this new moon is two degrees Gemini. It's trining. So it's good. It's great for new beginnings. Saturn's lending stability and longevity and commitment. Um, Mars is in the fourth house, so you might be having some issues at home that are interfering with whatever's going on with this new moon in your in your partnership. Either you're doing work around the house, you're maybe repairs, or um, if you're, the, I mean, Mars is where your energy is. So you could either be arguing with people in your house, or you could be working hard to get your house in order. Um, it's always good under a Mars transit to, um, because it could also represent anger, so you could be blowing up at home. You know, um, if you, Use your energy through like some physical activity. It, you'll avoid the anger issues. So like go for a run, do exercise, clean the house, lift heavy furniture, whatever you're doing, as long as you're using your muscles and you're expending energy, it will, because if you let it build up, it'll come out as anger and out, outbursts. Um, so you don't want that. You want to release the energy. Um, then you have, let's see, Uranus is in the 12th house. And now this is not right. It can't be in your 12th house. Uranus is in Taurus. Um, so it's really in your 5th house. No, it's in your 6th house. I'm sorry. Because if Gemini is in your 7th house, Uranus is in your 6th house. So there could be some surprises around... Um, health or work, maybe you're going to be surprising everyone. <laughs> um, there, there could be some instability. When Uranus is in the sixth house, there could be some instability around your day-to-day uh, -day job experiences or even with the health. Like you may have some health issue pop up. Um, so take, if you're feeling run down or you're feeling like you need something, a test or whatever, just go for it. Take time out to heal and, and rest. Venus is going to be conjunct Mercury um, during this moon, this new moon. So definitely you're going to hear news. If you're waiting to hear from someone or to hear back from someone, either in a relationship or even a contract, because Mercury it rules contracts. It, it rules communication, but it also rules contracts. So And plus it's in Gemini, so there could be two offers or two potential partnerships that are on the table. Um, and you have to decide which one is the best one for you. So take your time and think about that. Um, if you're signing a contract during this new moon, check all the details. Make sure you understand what you're signing up for. Make sure you understand what you're getting for your money. You know, because if you, you don't want to sign up for something and all of a sudden it's like bait and switch, you know. So read the fine print. Communicate and learn, you know, read all the details. Check out all the details. 
because Mars is in Pisces in the fourth house and it's sextiling Uranus in the sixth house. So there could be some unexpected developments between what's going on at home and what's going on at work. You, you know, you may feel like taking action. You may be wanting to work from home. You might be even working from home with Mars in the fourth house. Um, so Uranus always brings surprises. Um, so if you need rest, just take take your time out and take and rest. You're going to need it because this new beginning, when it starts, you're going to want to be in tip-top shape to take advantage of this new opportunity. And it's coming. It may be delayed because of all the retrograde energy, but it will come. First, you need the new moon. So you need the new moon in, the, in your seventh house, which is on the 22nd. After that, the doors are open. And then we're also going to be having eclipses in June. So things could just pop up out of the blue and your, your plans might be, uh, you might have to take action quickly. So be ready. So I hope you um, enjoyed this reading, Sag. And if you liked it, please click on the like button or um, click on the subscribe button. If you're new, um, welcome. And if you'd like a private reading, just click on the link in the description box and we'll get you on my schedule and take you to my website. And we'll be working together. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, you have some new beginnings coming up ahead. So enjoy May, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now, Sag.